you acknowledge and thank God for every person that you didn't have to come to Shiloh this morning, but God pressed it upon your heart or however it happened, we thank God for you. There is a word, there is worship, there is love. We pray that this be a house where you can receive the love of God because that's what we're supposed to be about. And I pray that that will be shown, not said, because a lot of times we speak a lot about love and we talk about, but love is, a, is an action. And the only way to get love is you have to give it. And we have to understand that as the representative of Jesus Christ, that he came showing love. He came uh, as love because he introduced himself as love. And, and we can't find no greater love than that of Jesus Christ. And so we pray today, if by chance there's somebody that's watching by Facebook Live or in, even in this building that's been searching, that haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, we pray that this day be the day that you turn it all over to Jesus and let him work it out because he is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other, for Jesus truly is the way. And I don't know why we have to try to find so many other options when we have the greatest gift of all. We celebrate it, on, we celebrate it at, at Christmas time, but he ought to be in our heart all the time. And he ought to be on our mind all the time. And he ought to be on our lips all the time. And so today, God, we, we, we want to block out everything that would be a hindrance to God speaking to us. We want to block out anything that will hinder us from receiving what God really wants us to have because it makes it makes no sense for us to come sitting in this building and not expecting God to speak to us and not expecting God to move on our behalf because he's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. So as we come in, let us come in together. Let us come with a mind of worship. And we are just going to let go and let God have his way. At this time, we, we're going to uh, just have a word of prayer. We're just going to come in agreement. Thank you, Lord. We're going to come in agreement because we do know that God is in the midst of us. Father, you said where there's two or three gathered together in your name, that you're in the midst. As I count today, God, we thank you that there is a great host in this house today. Lord God, we have a great cloud of witnesses that are pushing us to keep going forward. For we do walk by faith and not by the sight. Father, if we were walking by sight, would give up because it seemed like the mountains are high and the valleys get low. And we wonder sometimes, where are you, God? But then we go to the scriptures and you tell us that you would never leave us or forsake us. So I thank you today, God, that you are a very present help time of our troubles. Somebody, Lord God, today is seeking refuge because they've been bombarded with so many things and so many things have happened in their lives and Lord God, they, Lord, they, they, they've thrown up their hands, but Lord, we thank you that you are our refuge and our fortress that we can find and we can hide in you, Lord God, until the storms of life pass over.
happen. To me, that was good. God did it. Hallelujah. Has the Lord done anything for you?
say they want to take the credit and say that I done it. I was the one pulling myself up by my bootstraps. I don't know what kind of boots and what kind of straps you got. But only God can do what needs to be done. And as soon as we figure that out, we're going to learn how to rest better. We're going to learn how to trust Him more. Because, because we are we are frail in all that we can do. You know, some people, we, we've seen them build great skyscrapers. But what happens is, is that one earthquake can bring that down. But when God built the house, it stands. I don't care what comes against it. When God does, does a thing, and when He do a thing, anything can come against it, but God will keep it standing. First of all, God don't separate the right from the wrong. Too many times we try, we trying to fight battles that only God can fight. Learn how to take your hands off and let God put His hands on. Because when God finishes, it, it ain't gonna ain't nothing gonna happen, but it's gonna be done. And He don't apologize for what He do. Been kept by God. Yeah. There's been some stuff that you done been in. You can't tell everybody where you've been, but you know that you didn't come out on your own. Yeah. It was God that did it for you. Yeah. 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 Can I testify for a moment? There used to be some little holes in the wall that I went into, and bullets flying everywhere, and I came out. Church all the time. Yeah. That ain't that ain't what that ain't what. 
to forgive you of your sins. That's when things start happening. And things start turning around because there's so many people that want to put a check mark on how good they were in church. But Jesus is looking for a personal relationship. And in a personal relationship, it's a one-on-one.
then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. The word of the Lord for the people of God. It's a whole, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It sounds like a whole lot of dying, but they're living in the midst of the dying. Amen. 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 Ushers, thank you for your service this morning, and we appreciate you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Verse number three, it said, and there were four leper men that entered, that set that uh, leper men at the inner of the gate, and they said one to another, why sit we here until we die? Right. Mm -hmm. I want to talk to you from the topic or from the theme of this sermon, sitting at the gate. Right. Brothers and sisters, life brings us <laughs> a lot of challenges. If you are living in this world, you're going to face obstacles, yes. heartache, yes. troubles, yes. circumstances that are beyond your control. Because we as humans, we want to control everything. We want, we want, we want to be in control. We want to be able to, to push a button and things happen like we want it to happen. And, and if it don't happen, then we, then we don't know what to do. Right. But I want, I want to tell you that, that life's challenges are supposed to make us and not break us. Amen. The only reason why it ought to break us is, is that it, it, in order for us to move forward, that, that's the only time it ought to break us to the point to break us down to build us up. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, God wants us to understand that the troubles that come in our life are not there to destroy us. No, they are. But they are there to make us look at ourselves and examine the circumstances and the situation and to say like the lepers man, why sit we here we until we die? We mm -hmm. Man. Why do I keep going through the same motions, going through the same things and, and, and get the same results and I'm getting mad at myself because I keep doing the same thing Expecting something different, yes. but getting the same thing. Same thing. Same as I as I heard it before, is is that if you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result, that becomes to be insanity. Mm -hmm. it, it, it'll drive you crazy because you're wondering. I'm, I keep putting me in the same work. I keep doing the same thing, and I keep coming up with the same result. And I come to tell you today through the by, through and by the Holy Spirit, maybe, just maybe, some things need to change. Holy Spirit. I got Holy Spirit. And we gotta stop blaming other folk for why we do what we do. Because what I need you to understand is, is that if other people are calling you to have all this stuff that's going on with you, you have given them too much power over you. Brothers and sisters, you, you have to own your decisions. We have to own our decisions to the point where, where when we look at why we've done what we've done, we can't blame nobody but us. But I want to tell you, the, the, the one thing that, that we ought to understand is, is that before we start making decisions, the Bible said we ought to acknowledge God in everything that we do, and he will direct. I don't know about y'all, but, but I need God to direct some stuff in my life because, because there's a lot, of, a lot of chaos and a lot of traffic going on, a lot of stuff that's happening, and I need somebody to, to help me to navigate the things of my life. Yes, Lord. Maybe, maybe, maybe you got it all together and you don't, you don't need that, but I, I need God every day and every hour. I need him to lead me and to guide me because, because there are pitfalls and there, there are stumbling blocks and there are situations that are coming to kill, steal, and to destroy. 
destroyed. But he says, but I come. That you can have life. But the only way you can have that life is you need God as a sinner. And he's the GPS that's guiding you. You ought to put your hand on yourself and say, God, give me your GPS. So, so that I won't be out of control and I won't be running, running off the bridge that I, I see the sign saying the bridge is out. But because, because I have no steering wheel, I don't have no guide that I keep running over and falling off the bridge because I have no self-control. I know it's wrong. I know I shouldn't do it. But I keep on falling in the same trap. I, I, I said, I said January the 1st, I'm going to do better. But what I find is, is that by January the 4th, I'm back in the same Serious. 
to be offended. And I want to tell you that, that the choices that you make
wonder what I got up in here. You got the chocolate chip cookies and you put them other ones out there for everybody else to eat, but you know you got the Oreos back up under there. <laughs>
to get me jump started. That's what I need. If he sent a word and said I can do bad by myself, what am I gonna bring somebody else in there that breaks me down even more? The doors of the church open. Y'all ain't ready. We done. We done. Finish. There might be somebody in the building this morning. sitting at the gate Jesus. trying to figure out what's my next move Jesus. that message works for you oh, yeah. you can't sit there can't do it. until you die no. No. you can't go back to the world that you were living in no. and the things that you were doing because no. if you really be honest that wasn't working either
I just know when 
I know when, when receiving and when not receiving. Yes, Lord. But I'm not going to keep beating up against the wall. Jesus. I've done what you told me to do, Lord. That's all I can do. Amen. But there's a religious spirit. A religious spirit that continues to keep trying to bind God's people. Can I tell you that religion kills? We always done it this way. We ain't never done that before. This, that, and other. That's a religious spirit. Yeah. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you, Lord. And we got we to kill that spirit. Amen. Because in order to go to different, to go to a different place, you can't, you can't get, get stuck on what we always do. Amen. Amen. Usher, y'all are in charge. God bless you today. Amen.
Uh, we are uh, at a point of announcements. We want to thank again everybody for your participation on yesterday in our uh, Kimba Power Youth Empowerment Conference. I, I believe that the, the adults were just as blessed as the young people with all the things that went on. Young men that poured out of his heart uh, to, in preaching. And then in the classrooms, the, the classrooms, they poured out their heart to give uh, the information that are needed. And we just thank God uh, for uh, the first time we were able to come back together collectively. And we're believing that God will help it to grow even the more. Amen. Again, we want to thank God for everybody uh, in your respective places, coordinators, uh, for those of you that took part to make sure that everything come together. We just pray that God will bless you back for your doings and for your service. Amen. And for those of you that were not able to go and your prayers went forward, they were felt. And we thank God uh, for the for the ministry because you don't always have to have your hand right in it. But as long as you're doing what God requires of you, it is, it is pleasing unto the Lord. This, this uh, right after this morning service, we do have uh, one that is shown greatness in the classroom. Uh, Sister Kamika Morris, we are going to celebrate with her, and we want to have a, a little, a little something to just let her know that we appreciate her representing and putting much effort into, I believe, kindergarten. And well, I don't know about y'all, but I work with kindergartners and trying my best to try to corral them in. And I don't know how they do it, but to God be all the glory. And so her peers. Uh, voted and they they recognizing her as the teacher of the year and so we we don't want them to do no more and it's not jealousy but we don't want them to celebrate her no more than we celebrate so this afternoon we're going to celebrate a little bit amen uh we we thank god for her and we pray that 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 success will continue to domino and, and even get better and, and better and better that the lord would even lead her and guide her to master's degree and even administration, if that's so, that's something that she desires that God will open up her school. Because we do have, we, we do have that example in front of her, and we thank God for uh, Sister Rita, who uh, did some administration work in the class and in the classroom. So we thank God that Sister Mars has an example, Amen, of what can happen if we would push forward yeah. and not sit at the gate, yeah. Amen. Uh, lastly. But definitely not least, uh, on next Sunday, I know we all like to do this on Sundays, but we, we're going to have a call meeting on next Sunday for, it won't take no more than 10 minutes, uh, but I'm asking every member that it can and will, we're going we're to have a call meeting. There's a matter that we want to address, and we want to take care of it swiftly, and we'll do that on next Sunday. So if there's somebody that's not here that, might want to be a part of the call meeting. Well, I hope they come for worship. Let me say that out loud. I hope you're coming for worship I and mean, not for a call meeting to find out what's going on. But if you come and worship, and then we will then you can know what's what's going on. But but we pray that that's the reason why we come. Amen. Also on first Sunday we begin Black History Month. And all, every Sunday we will be <clears throat> recognizing black history. So we we asking that you would un understand that we have impacted this nation in so many ways. And we want to be able to recognize some of those people and that we can celebrate together during this month of black history coming up on next month. I know some of y'all say the 14th of February, I, I'm going to celebrate something else, but no. It ought to be a labor of love in everything that we do, not just 14, but every day. We ought to love and we ought to treat each other right. Amen. With all that being said, if there's nothing else that would claim our attention, we would ask that you would stand. Father, I thank you. Thank you. That your word has. I don't know about anybody else touch my heart to help me to realize and understand that I cannot blame the membership for what I didn't do. But help me not to sit at the gate. Help me not to go back. But help me to have a, a 
talk with you and to talk with myself. That whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Whatever you need me to say, I'll say it. Even if it don't sit right with everybody. Because when it all boils down, I've got an answer to you. Help us, Lord, every one of us, to be strengthened to fight the good fight of faith. If by chance, Lord God, there's somebody that's going through any sickness in this building today, God, by the power of your spirit, we declare them to be healed in Jesus' name. I know what the results say. I know what the symptoms are saying. But we will not sit at that gate. We'll move forward. Bless now your people. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now and forever. And let us sing along with the choir as we close.